hey there and welcome back to the channel so today's video is about how to model um, better entities right so let's assume you are building an app and you happen to have a user entity in your app so what i tend to do with all my entities which i call it maintaining data type and field name consistency is that let's assume i have id on a user and then another entity i also have something that uniquely identifies that particular entity like a product what i tend to do is i maintain the same data types for the ids so if i have id on the user that is meant for identifying that user uniquely then i make sure that all ids on all other entities have the same data type it just maintains um this kind of consistency so that some ids are not integers whilst others are string whilst others are other data types right it just makes everything looks uniform except edge cases where you need to have that particular thing as a number right so an integer or any data type but aside that i always make sure that my especially ids of the same data type across my entities now the next thing is redundancy in naming so for instance i have this user class here right and you see that the fields i have over here are name email photo url a redundant name would be to give this name um, field username right so user except when you have an actual username but then repeating the name of the class as part of the field so user email for instance user uh, email or user photo this way of naming is redundant because when we are on the user we know that anything on this user belongs to the user so if, if i do something like user dot name right user dot name i know this name belongs to this user i don't have to do user dot user name or if it's a product i don't have to come and do product name just to tell that this product has a product name on it i can just name it name like this and whenever i create an instance of this product and i access the name field it just makes sense it automatically makes sense that this name field on the product is the product name the price is the product price it's not necessary adding product as in product and as called price or product price when the price itself is on the product now the next thing i do when modern data is to use linear data structures as much as possible so an example of this would be for a user right so i have this user over here and let's assume uh, a user can have first name and then last name so instead of having final so name let me call this first name instead of having final string uh, something like this what most people tend to do is they rather have a map that contains the first name and the last name so at the end of the day they are having something like uh, final so let me comment this out final name which is a map so map of um, strength and then dynamic and then it's called name and then within this name they have the first name and then the last name right now this is not problematic except that it makes querying very difficult right so if you're having a lot of these um, type of data in your database and you are using something like firestore querying for a user who has a first name equal to something is not going to be possible because when you have a map firestore is expecting that you compare the exact map which means you have to pass in the first name and then the last name as it is before you can get that user retained on the other hand if you use first name like this and then last name like this you can just query where the first name equals something and the last name equals something or just query the first name whereas if they are in a map form you can just create an empty map and pass in just the first name and expect this user to be retained because the data types uh, the, the values in the map are not going to be the same right so that's about using linear data structures try to use linear data structures as much as possible just define the fields individually right so name uh, address whatsoever just define them individually except in cases where it makes sense 
to define them as an object or a map. Right now, the next step is to implement proper referencing. So this goes especially when you are using Firestore as a database. For instance, I can have a product and then there will be a user ID field on this product. And I want this user ID field to reference a user, which means if I create an instance of this product, the user ID on this is referencing a user's entity or a user's document in Firestore. So what most people tend to do is they just put the ID as the user ID. Now let me show you an example. So I can have a product and there is going to be a product, right? And let's ignore all these and focus on the user ID. Now you will see something like a random ID for the user ID field. Now this is not the proper way of referencing in Firestore. Because when I look at this user ID, I don't know where this user ID is coming from. I can't tell if this user ID is coming from the customer's collection, it's coming from the member's collection, people's collection, or whatever collection it's coming from. In order to know which collection this user ID is coming from, I would have to either read through the entire code base and look at how it's being used, or go to the actual database to look at how the user collection is set up. Now, a better way to reference this is to use the full path of this is id so mostly in firestore this is the right way to do referencing you write the full part of the collection and then the document id so imagine this user is on the user's collection it's going to be users slash the id right and that is going to make sense because anyone who comes to the code base knows that this particular user in order to locate this particular user i have to go to users slash a particular id Let's assume our collection is not called users, but then it's called customers. Then nothing changes because anyone who comes to the code base still knows that this particular user can be found in the customer's collection. Now, another benefit of doing this is that this is a proper way of referencing. So if you are using the type reference in your code base, then this is actually going to work because Firestore can then use this full path to find a document. You don't have to always append the user id to the collection name manually right now the last step for this video is to document your models so just here with the user id if i'm a new um, developer on this code base i don't really know what this user id means right so does this user id means this particular person bought this product or does it mean he's the owner of the product or what actually is this user id doing so a better way to explain to people what your fields are doing is to add documentation to them and in that we can add documentation with a three thread um, slash so something like this and then we can type what this user id means so um, the owner of the product right and we can do the same for all our entities so just at the top and this is different from comments because this shows up when the person hovers on the product. So a description of the product. Now, when I hover over the user ID, realize that I get this two tip, which has the owner of the product, right? And if I hover over the description, I get a description of the product. Now, anyone using this product can just hover over any of the fields and know what the field stands for or what the fields are doing, right? So in general, these are how I model my entities when working on a project. Um, if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Thank you.